Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. rejoicing in our souls. Hallelujah. Praise be to you, O God. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. 
Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. to set your people free from our fears and sins release us Christ in whom our rest shall be you our strength and consolation come salvation to impart. Dear desire of many a nation, joy of many a longing heart. Born your people to I'm reading the story of the Magi from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
star, a star shining in the night. Oh, a star, a star leading them to the Christ child, showing the way with its wondrous light. from afar they heard the angels and saw the star and so they followed it night and day till they came to the place where Jesus lay a star a star leading the wise men a star a star shining in Christ child, showing the way with its wondrous light. And so they came to witness the birth of a child who was born to save Son of our God in heaven above, sent to earth to show his love. A star, a star, leading the wise men, a star, a star, shining in the night. Oh, a star, a star, leading them to the Christ child. Showing the way with its wondrous light. Showing the way with its wondrous light. As that special time for the giving of gifts was coming, he was paying close attention to his children, trying to decide what would be the perfect gift for giving them. He wanted something that would not be wasted on them, that they would not soon forget, something that would help them grow into be better people, stronger people, better equipped to handle life and to live life to its fullest, to be the kind of people that would make the world a better place. So he gave great thought as he pondered the possibilities, watching and thinking about his children and their unique gifts and talents. They did seem enthralled by superheroes and anything to do with superheroes. He would see them out there playing and slaying evildoers and villains by the hundreds, by the thousands, working for justice and good and standing up for what was right. But then also he saw their powers as they played these games, sometimes turning over and being used not just for good, but just for power, sometimes turning their friends into enemies and the lines blurring, sometimes even taking advantage of those who were weaker. There were always clothes, of course, to get. They were the sensible gift. He could afford to get them the best, the shoes and the jackets. They wanted the designer labels. But sometimes he saw in this too that they would strut around in boasting in what they had, sometimes comparing to other people and thinking themselves better than them through what they were wearing. Then there was food. Everyone always needed food. In fact, he could afford to get them the finest of delicacies. He could get them the chocolates and the candies and give it to them. But what he had seen them do sometimes with such gifts is hoard those to themselves, not really understanding that the best food, the best delicacies in life are sweetest when shared with a friend and with another that they didn't know. Then, of course, there's books. Books were a good gift. He had given that before. People always need books to learn from, to make them better. 
He had seen his children sometimes avidly reading the books that he had given, but then he saw the other ones tossing those gifts of books aside sometimes. Perhaps they were looking for the gifts of the superheroes that they would rather have had. After pondering, he made a decision and he was very pleased with this. But then the next question came up, how should he wrap this gift? He could wrap it sensibly in jolly paper with a bow on top, nothing too fancy because yes, they were prone to tear apart the wrappings just to see what was underneath. And he knew they would do that. He could afford the curled ribbons and glitter and fancy things and maybe even add some sound to it, but somehow that didn't seem to be the thing. Finally, with it all decided, the time for Christmas had arrived. And with excitement, he laid the gift out there for the children and watched as they would unwrap it. It was wrapped simply, but extravagantly, in swaddling cloths. He had put the gift of himself, of the purest of all love, in this small bundle. And that first Christmas, wise ones came seeking this gift this child that had been laid in the manger there, bearing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The Magi brought gifts that were prophetic, that would foretell the unwrapping of this gift. This was a child that was to be king, and gold was fit to crown a king. This was a child that would be priest, too, and frankincense would be that aroma for the priest, the high priest, to connect this people, the children, to God. And myrrh, a healing oil, but also the main ointment used in embalming. Myrrh for a savior that would be born. The children would not open this gift quickly even if they wanted to and tried, because this gift was one that was going to take each a lifetime to unfold, to discover that mystery, the wonderment within. They would discover it throughout their lives as individuals and as a people. And as they uncovered the mystery of this gift, they would find their very lives. And the gift would be one that they would continue to give as they found ways to use their power for good meekly and wear their clothes humbly as they walked beside their God and share their tables generously with all who needed that connection with a friend and a food and share the books and the words that God had put therein freely with the world. And the wonderment of all, they're discovering the pure joy of giving that gift that they received that Christmas. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain Christ is born. Go, go tell it on the mountain, over, over the hills and everywhere. Go, go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. When I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and He showed me. Jesus Christ is born. 
the hills and everywhere. Go down on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. The word epiphany means revelation. It is learning something very suddenly that you didn't study for. It's just something that comes. This is Epiphany Sunday in the year of the church. This is the beginning of the season of Epiphany. And we focus on learning. We focus on insights. We focus on light. One commentator has suggested that the church year is such that this is the season in which we study and learn about the nature of the Christ child whose birth we just celebrated at Christmas. The nature of who Christ is is part of what we try to grasp during the season of Epiphany. And so it seems appropriate today to bring that thought to the table. There is nothing in Jesus' own teachings. There is nothing in Scripture. There is nothing in church history, in my opinion, that tells us more about who Jesus really is, what his nature and character really is, than this table does. This table tells us, teaches us, enlightens us to the fact that Jesus is, in fact, Savior and Lord, that he sacrificed in order to save us. And so I invite us to think those thoughts as we come to the table today. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, today we are especially thankful as we come to this table. We hope that we never take it for granted, but some days are still special. And we especially come with thanksgiving today. We come with thanksgiving that you have revealed to us who your Son, Jesus Christ, really is. We come with thanksgiving that as we have celebrated his birth, we now learn about him, follow him, celebrate his life, celebrate his death, and burial, and above all, his resurrection. In his name we pray. Amen. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And thus we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. All is in readiness. Come to the feast.
Go now and freely give that gift that you have received at Christmas, remembering that wise ones still see the mysteries and the glories of that gift that God gave to God's children at Christmas. Peace on earth and goodwill now to all. Thank you.